أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده صدق وعده ونصر عبده وأعز جنده وهزم الأحزاب وحده وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا وقدوتنا وإمامنا محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخالده رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي Respected brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته All praises are due to Allah We have no God but Allah and Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is his messenger I would like to thank Allah for every ni'mah he has given me personally, my family, and all of you, my students and my brothers and supporters in da'wah, my sisters. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shower you all with his love, with his protection, with his rahmah and maghfirah, and with his tawfiq and hidayah. May Allah grant you all your wishes in dunya and akhirah. Ya Allah, we ask you to protect us from the evil of this dunya, from the evil of the grave, from the evil of al-Masih al-Dajjal, and from the evil of Yawm al-Qiyamah. Ya Rabb, forgive us and make us among Ahl al-Jannah. Ameen, Ya Rabb. Those who enter Jannah, insha'Allah, without hisab, without questioning, and without prior punishment. Ameen, Ya Rabb. May Allah grant shifa to our brothers and sisters who are sick, those who are suffering in silence, I ask Allah to grant them ease, grant them comfort, grant them shifa combined with reward, and to those who look after them. Amin ya. I ask Allah rahmah to our loved ones who left us, and I ask Allah hidayah to those who are misguided, and I ask Allah to increase us in guidance, in barakah, in rahmah, and may Allah make us true servants of his. Amen. Any question before we start? One or two questions before we start. <clears throat> yes. Any question? You don't have question? It means you don't think. It means you don't. There is something wrong. If, we, if you don't have questions, it means you are something wrong with you. I have question. Wa alaikum salam. I have question for all of you. How are you doing? That's a question. Okay. Yalla, sister Ali, go ahead. I just would like to ask you about, um, you mentioned about uh, zakat before. I just wanted to ask about zakat um, of our children's savings. You know, like the money that um, they get for gifts. So then it's put in their savings. Do, do we as parents need to put zakat, to, to pay zakat uh, for those? Excellent. Good question. Very practical. Straight to the point. Very good. Yes, the parents are responsible for the money of their children who are under age. Under age means under 18, under 20, because they may not be mature enough to uh, use the money properly. So it is your duty as a mother or father to pay zakat. But there are two conditions for zakat. Their money must be minimum, must have nisab. In Malaysia, 20,000. If your children have in their account 20,000 each, each child has 20,000 or whoever has 20 and up. It's your duty as a parent to pay 2.5% of that amount annually, as long as there is 20,000 minimum throughout the year. The second condition, one year. One year has to pass. For example, Ramadan to Ramadan. Last Ramadan, you paid zakat from your son, from your son's account. Your son, let's say, has account uh, 20,000 ringgit. And you pay 2.5%. 2.5% 2 
okay? You pay 2.5%. Now you need to, this year, if there is still 20,000 plus, you pay another 2.5%. Until the child receives his money and he becomes responsible over his money, then there is no responsibility on you as a parent. As a parent, yes. So is the money of the orphan. Whoever is taking care of the property of the orphan should administer his or her zakat. Not because they are orphans, they don't pay zakat. There are billionaire orphans. There are orphans when, they, when their parents die, leave them billions, not even millions. So anyone who has 20,000 ringgit, Malaysia, I'm talking about Malaysia here, and up, you pay zakat on their behalf until they be in charge of their money themselves. Is this clear, inshallah? Thank you very much, Shay. Eh? You're welcome. You're welcome. And, and Shay, 20,000 is Malaysia. So then if we don't live in Malaysia, we need to find out the needs. Excellent. Of the if country. you live in England, if you live in America, if you live in Algeria, so you ask the, the religious authorities, just call it Islamic Center. What is the Nisab? N-I-S-A-B, Nisab. What is the Nisab? N-I-S-A-B. What is the Nisab for, for this year? They tell you 6,000 pounds, 20,000 ringgit, 10,000 US, I don't know. Each country has its own Nisab. So just call the nearest Islamic center to you and ask them. Thank you very much, Shay. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. May Allah bless you for asking such good questions. Ask practical questions, sisters and brothers, about your deen. What Allah wants from you. We are all going to die and leave behind us everything Allah gave us. So we, 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 we go clean. We go light. We go light. Good. What else? Shay, salam alaikum, Shay. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I want to ask, like, for example, we say that if the money that we receive is not uh, halal, we do not use it. But if, say, somebody give you a packet of food, I mean, a bag of food, like um, uh, dry products for the kitchen to use, like sauce, bihut, and stuff like that, and if that somebody is a who is the politician and is known, um, how do I say, um, corrupted? Um, I, I don't want to, how do I say, to put the name or judge him. Of but, course. Yeah. So, but it is um, popularly um, understood that he is of that nature. So can we accept the food and, and, and the bag of food? I mean, it was already accepted when I came home, so, uh, when they came to the door, because, um, yeah. So okay. we don't know what to do. Shall we give it to the poor? What do we do with it? Very good. Number one, number one. In order to say somebody is corrupt or not, you need to have either public evidences or personal evidences. Either we have seen them ourselves with our own eyes or heard them or they try to, uh, they tempted to corrupt us personally, then alhamdulillah you have what you call evidence, or uh, he has been tried by court, pronounced by judge as corrupt, not rumors, because look, politicians, they are like goats, male goats, they will knock each other, and some of them don't fear Allah, they may accuse somebody of being corrupt. Now, if we have evidence, that's different than when there is just hearsay. So if a politician gives me, let's say some rice, comes to my house and give me some rice or a gift, a gift, part of community service, I take, I take, not because I hear he is corrupt, I give away or I refuse, unless I have evidence. Or a judge tried him and pronounced him. 
then in this case, I stay away. Uh, what's your question about money? How, how come a money is haram? What do you mean by money haram? Because there is stuff still, there is uh, details, there are details in this question. Um, well, there was a bag of food plus 100 ringgit uh, as an ang pao. So that was in the bag of food. And then um, what I'm saying is... We can't hear. Sister Umar Adam, I cannot yes. not hear you. I, I unmute the... I'm not hearing. Can you hear me now? Yeah, repeat because I didn't hear anything. Oh, okay. Um, the money bit is not so much the money. I was just worried about the food because can we eat the food that... But you see the, the trial is going on and there's no verdict yet. Oh, I see. And why, okay, why is this politician giving you? I mean, and uh, okay. why? So like, you fall under his, you fall under his uh, yes. jurisdiction? Yes, our district. Okay. And then and it, is, it is given to me uh, in my name because it's Chinese New Year. And I your, see. yeah, it's Chinese New Year and every Chinese New Year, he does give us only the, the Chinese people, whether you are a Muslim or not, they will give to all of us. The thing is, every year it's just oranges and cakes. But this year it was uh, dry food stuff. So we don't know what to do with it. Okay, no, don't worry. Take it, take and say, this is a risk from Allah. A risk from Allah, take it, sister, take it and enjoy it. Allah has sent you some risk. Okay. All right, Chef. Thank Don't worry about it. Enjoy it. Say Bismillah. I, I, I gave actually a lot of it to my maid to take home. Okay, good. Yes, good. Okay. To feel good, you can give to the maid. Don't go to the maid and say, give me back. Sheikh Zubair gave me different fatwa. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <Chef. laughs> okay. Mashallah. Okay. Um, Salamu alaikum. Can I ask for the question from uh, what Sister Ali uh, Ali has asked just now? Yes. Um, you know, with regard to the zakat, is it okay if we take the money from the account of our children or from our orphan children to pay the zakat on their behalf? Or it has to come from our own income? Uh, sorry, Sister, repeat, repeat. Even you know, when you are paying the zakat for your children or uh, the people, uh, the, the children that uh, uh, you are taking care of, the orphans that you are taking care of, is when you are paying, can you take the money from their accounts to pay the zakat or you have to, it has to come from your own money? It has to come from their money. Okay, all right. Later on, come. if you want to add, if you want to give them something, then give them. But pay from their money, the zakat, purify their money. Because zakat is purification. Purify their money. If you want to top up later on to add, go ahead, may Allah reward you. Yeah, but you have to give from their money. And you tell them, if they are um, at certain age where they are set, uh, mommy or auntie or whoever is in charge of that money has already Pay your zakat. Congratulations. Allah will bless you. Tell them that. So that they know, alhamdulillah, their money has been. And then they learn to pay zakat and from young age. Mm. Yeah, some kids, mashallah, their parents put a lot of money in their accounts. So must, must pay zakat. Yeah, jazakallah, Sheikh. Why, Yaakov? Okay, let's go conquer Mecca. Takbir! The conquest of Mecca. What led to the conquest of Mecca? 10 years ago, in the life of Rasulullah, the Prophet, peace be upon him, left Mecca scared, wanted by Quraysh, 200 camels to be given for anyone who brings Muhammad, وسلم, dead or alive. Whether you kill him or you bring him alive, same. You have 200 camels. Everybody, manhunt. Manhunt, the biggest manhunt in history was Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All Arabia, except Medina, 
looking for him to catch him dead or alive 10 years ago now and he left only with his best him his most beloved companion abu bakr as-siddiq radiyallahu anhu they were scared they were worried had it not been for allah to give them uh, security and safety now he's coming back to mecca with 10000 soldiers allahu akbar 10000 soldiers all ready to fight under his command and he's going to enter mecca yet he will not spill one drop of blood so what a great conqueror he was sallallahu alaihi wasallam although the right word is not conquest or conqueror but opening an opener because the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam didn't conquer mecca he opened mecca there is big difference when you open the the, the door with the key and when you break the door there is a break in and there is opening Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he entered Mecca and like any military leader he did not spill one drop of blood for those who didn't fight except those who fought they were few they were very unlucky because they met the strongest leader of the muslims in military might who is he Khalid ibn al-Walid and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam told them don't fight don't take your weapons drop your weapons you be safe but if you take your weapon sorry we we have to use force don't drop don't take your weapon. drop it you be safe a group of zealots ah uh, among quraish thought they still strong and this and that they met the sword of allah khalid ibn al-walid radiyallahu anhu and few sahaba may allah be pleased with them they finished them in no time pocket of resistance you should not do that the prophet sallam gave them peace gave them his word but they still they don't want we will see the details later on but i want my brothers and sisters to understand what led to the conquest of mecca why the prophet sallam had to conquer mecca There were 10 years of peace, right? You don't attack us, we don't attack you. The Prophet Sallallahu kept his promise, his word. The non-Muslims didn't. We will see the details. And that is enough. The moment you kill a Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu is not going to leave you any chance. Please understand this. The life of a Muslim is holier than the Kaaba. You see the Kaaba? And the importance of the Kaaba, the Kaaba is direction of the Qibla, is the house of Allah. Still, there is something more holier than this. What is it? The life of a Muslim. A Muslim is very sacred to Allah. Killing a Muslim is like you killed all Muslims. And when, when the non-Muslims killed the Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ never, ever thought twice. He will go and attack them. something we are not doing something the muslims of today have lost sunnah we have lost may allah forgive us okay i need some water inshallah to drink so someone inshallah is getting me some water takbir bismillah <clears throat> are you ready We are in page 519 in this edition of the book. For those who are using another edition, look for the conquest of Mecca, Fathu Mecca. Fathu Mecca. Yalla, bismillah. Let's start with Let me see who is in the list. Welcome everybody brothers and sisters mashallah
Yalla, brother Muhammad Ishar. Bismillah. Start reading until I tell you to stop this. Assalamu alaikum, Shaykh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The conquest of Makkah. Yes. Ibn Al-Qaim described the conquest of Makkah as the greatest one by which Allah honored his religion, messenger, soldiers, and honest party. He hereby rescued the sacred house, whose guidance all people seek. It was the greatest propitious event in heaven and on earth. It was the most significant prelude to a new era that was to witness the great march of Islam, Islamization and the entry of people into the fold of Islam in the huge post. It provided an ever-shining face and a most glowing source of inspiration to the whole earth. Very good. Hold on, please. Let's analyze this first paragraph. Very important. Thank you. Silence. Silence the TV. If, if Sheikh is speaking, that's blockbuster already. What do you need? You need another TV besides Sheikh Zubair? Takbir. Already the Chinese are disturbing me. Talk, 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 talk. You know what I mean? Chinese New Year. They're already playing a firecracker. Thank you very much. Ibn al-Qayyim al-Jawziya, rahimahullah, student of al-Imam Ibn Taymiyya, rahimahullah, described the opening of Mecca as the greatest opening in history. Why? Because the house of Allah, the Kaaba, returned to Islam once for all. Do you know the Kaaba was kidnapped by the shirk and the mushrikeen? The Kaaba is symbol of Tawheed. The Kaaba is the house of Allah. And Allah is Al-Wahid Al-Ahad. How come the symbol of a Tawheed, oneness of God, becomes the symbol of shirk? You see what shaitan can do? May Allah curse him. Shaitan, you see what he can do? He can turn a symbol of oneness of God, Al-Kaaba, into a symbol of shirk. So the opening of Mecca brought back the Kaaba to Islam once for all. Because that's the asal, the original idea behind establishing the Kaaba is Tawheed. Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam. When Allah commanded them to rebuild the Kaaba. For what? For the shirk? or for the worship of the one and the only one, Allah Azza wa Jal. So what happened between Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail until Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam? Centuries of shirk. Amr ibn al -Hay. remember that man. That man will burn in hell. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam said, I saw him burning in hell. Who is that man? He's the first who introduced shirk to the Arabs. The Arabs were monotheists. The Arabs were following Ibrahim السلام, and Ismail السلام, until this man called Amr ibn Lahai came and introduced this idea. What is it? He introduced the idea of uh, shirk through waqaf of camels for the so called idols. Then the Arabs, bit by bit, sikit, sikit, they started worshipping idols until Muhammad وسلم, opened Mecca. So Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, sees the opening of Mecca as the greatest event in history. Because the Kaaba came back to Islam once for all. That's what. The second thing, it's a new era of the strength of Islam and Muslims. As if the Muslims were waiting only for Mecca to become twin with Medina, then they go conquer the whole world. Allahu Akbar. What comes first must comes first. Medina, alhamdulillah, was under them. Need another very important city. What is it? Mecca. Because that's where the Qibla is. So free Mecca from shirk and mushrikeen and the idols. And now 
go east and west, north and south. SubhanAllah. Okay? So remember that, please. Never forget. This is why Allah documented the opening of Mecca with Surat and Nasr. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ Fatih, the opening of Mecca. Continue, please. Brief conquest events. According to the terms of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, the Arab tribes were given the option to join either of the parties, the Muslims or Quraysh, with which they desired to enter into treaty alliance. Should any of these tribes suffer aggression, then the party to which it was allied would have the right to retaliate. As a consequence, Banu Bakr joined Quraysh and Khuza'a joined Prophet Wasallam. They thus lived in peace for some time, but ulterior motives stretching back to pre-Islamic period ignited by unabated fire of revenge triggered fresh hostilities. Banu Bakr, without carrying a bit for the provisions of the treaty, attacked Banu Khuza'a in a place called Al-Watir in Sha'ban 8 after Hijrah. Quraysh helped Banu Bakar with men and arms, taking advantage of the dark night. Pressed by their enemies, the tribesmen of Khuza'a sought the holy sanctuary, but here too, their lives were not spared. And contrary to all accepted traditions, now file the chief of Banu Bakar, chasing them in the sanctified area where no blood should be shed, massacred his adversaries. Very good. What led now to the conquest of Mecca? This very important incident. Pay attention to it, sisters and brothers. What is it? There was a tribe called Banu Bakr. Banu Bakr, a tribe, Arab tribe. They aligned themselves with Quraysh. Are you with me? With Quraysh. Who are Quraysh? The inhabitants of Mecca. The inhabitants of Mecca are called Quraysh. Banu Bakr joined them. Banu Bakr joined them. Okay, fine. You join, no problem. Another tribe called Khuza'a. Called Khuza'a. Khuza'a joined the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They align themselves with the Muslims. Okay. Banu Bakr goes to Quraysh, be allied, be friends. And Khuza'a be friends with the Prophet ﷺ. No problem. So far, so good. But the problem is Banu Bakr attacked Khuza'a and killed them except one man. And where did they kill them? They killed them in the most holy place near the Masjid al-Haram, near the Kaaba. This leader of Banu Bakr, his name Naufal, he kept chopping their heads near the house of Allah because Khuza'a ran to the, the Kaaba. They said, peace, peace, there is peace between us. Why are you killing us? Not only Quraysh assisted them with weapons and with men, but they let them kill them inside the, near the Kaaba, which is very bad. That was like, you cannot do that. A Muslim or a non-Muslim should not do that because of the sanctity of the Kaaba. The Kaaba is so holy, you cannot spill blood there. And anyone who comes near Al-Masjid Al-Haram should be safe. So they did not even respect the traditions, the Arab traditions. Now, what do you think the Prophet will do? He will say, Ta'pala, it's okay, la. Uh, the attitude of la. Why do you add la after okay? Who told you that? Malaysian English. Do you know there is a book called Malaysian English? Ah, la in Arabic means no, by the way. How can you say, okay, no? Okay, la. That's why if, if an Arab speaks to you, say, why are you saying okay and no? Because la means la, la, la ilaha illallah. No God with Allah. Huh? Say okay, why you add la? Allah Akbar. 
So I repeat, Banu Bakr allied themselves with Quraysh. That's not the problem. Huza'a aligned themselves with the Prophet Sallallahu and the Muslims in Medina. But for Huza'a to attack Banu Bakr or Banu Bakr attack Huza'a, this is not accepted. So who attacked? Banu Bakr had problems with Huza'a. So they couldn't control themselves. At night, they raided them. And even the men who ran to the Kaaba, tried to protect themselves in the Kaaba, were killed. When the news reached the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you think that couldn't eat and couldn't sleep for days until he prepared his army and now he's coming. Oh, he's coming to do what? He's coming to take Mecca. You broke the promise. There is a treaty, peace. There is peace treaty between you and us. You, you declared war and you killed people who have sought our protection and alliance. That's it. You're part of the deal. You didn't honor it. There is no deal between us now. But this time the Prophet Sallallahu in brothers and sisters, in less than a year and a half, less than a year and a half, he prepared his army. You see how intelligent the Prophet was? You know how clever he was? And in less than that one year and a half, he propagated Islam. Many tribes came to Islam because Islam is a religion of submission. If people are given the chance, they come and submit. All what people need is good example and strength. Look at me. When you are weak, nobody follows you. I'm telling you now. Even when you are right, people will follow you when you're strong. Here is the example. How many people followed the Prophet ﷺ when he was weak versus how many people followed him when he became strong? In Mecca, how many followers he had? Not even 100. In Medina, thousands. Why? He became strong. In Medina, he, he gained strength. You need to know this. When you are weak, nobody wants to be around you. When you're strong, everybody wants to be your friend. Faham? Okay. Continue. <clears throat> when the aggrieved party sought justice from their Muslim allies, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as their leader, demanded an immediate redress for not only violating the treaty, but also slaying men allied to him in the sanctified sanctified area three demands were made the acceptance of any one of them was imperative one to pay blood money for the victims of Huza'a two to terminate their alliance with Banu Bakar or three to consider the truth to have been nullified very good the Prophet ﷺ, now the moment he verified true uh, Huza'a were killed and there was one man who survived and came to Medina wounded and told the Prophet Sassim what happened. The Prophet Sassim first verified. He found yes. His information in Medina, in Mecca told him yes. Oh Messenger of Allah, we have witnesses. This is what happened. So the Prophet Sassim made demands. Who's the leader of Quraysh? Abu Sufyan. Abu Sufyan, who is actually father-in-law of the Prophet Sallallahu because the Prophet is married to his daughter, Ummu Habiba radiallahu anha. But Abu Sufyan, not yet Muslim. Later on, he becomes Muslim. When the Prophet Sallallahu makes these three demands, one of them, if they accepted only one, the Prophet Sallallahu would, would be okay. Abu Sufyan didn't reject. He didn't say, no, we didn't do it. Because Abu Sufyan couldn't lie. He was an honorable man. Please understand. There are Oran Kafir, non-Muslims, but they have honor. 
And there are Muslims who don't have honor. Na'udhu billah. Like people who lie. So Abu Sufyan wouldn't deny the fact that, yes, Banu Bakr have broken the treaty of peace, which means Quraysh is in trouble now. So he, he came all the way from Mecca to Medina to negotiate any terms of, of uh, peace. But it was too late because the Prophet Sallallahu already has demanded three things to pay blood money for the victims of Huza. But there were many. How much money? All the victims of Huza who were killed, you pay blood money to their, their families. Quraysh, hey, you can't do that. You can't do that. To terminate their alliance with Banu Bakr. He told Quraysh, terminate. Take your hand off Banu Bakr. Let me deal with them. Don't defend them. If you defend them, we will come to you. Meaning, hand them over to us. The criminals, give them to us. These are criminals, killers. Give them to us. Because there is justice to be done. Or consider the truth to have been nullified. There is no peace of treaty between us and you anymore. Now Quraysh panic because they know the consequence. So they realized that Banu Bakr were foolish and brought destruction on, Quray on, uh, on Mecca. That's it. You see, I told you, always accept peace treaties because the Kuffar will never keep their peace. So once you have a peace treaty, you can go after the Oran Kafir. But when you don't have any treaty with them, this is why the United States of America, do you know? They don't sign many treaties. Do you know that or not? Do you know the so-called Israel? The so-called Israel, never call it Israel. The so-called Israel. Didn't sign the nuclear uh, treaty. They don't sign. They want you to sign any country, even when you don't have nuclear weapons, you sign. And those who have don't sign. You see? Anyways, they're smart. Continue, please. This behavior on the part of Quraysh was clearly a breach of the Treaty of Al Hudaybiyah and was obviously an act of hostility against the allies of the Muslims. That is Banu Khuzaa. Quraysh immediately realized the grave situation and feared the horrible consequences looming on the horizon. They immediately called for an emergency meeting and decided to delegate their chief, Abu Sufyan, to Medina for a renewal of the truce. He directly headed to the house of his daughter, Ummu Habiba, the Prophet's wife. But as he went to sit on the messenger's carpet, he fold, she folded it up. My daughter, said he, I hardly knew if you think the carpet is too good for me or that I am too good for the carpet. She replied, it is the messengers of Allah, carpet, and you are an unclean polities. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. His daughter, Umm Habiba, never forgot how her father treated her just because she became Muslim. Her father and her mother and her brothers were so harsh on her. For what sin she committed? Just for saying, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. She and her husband became Muslim and they were brutalized by the family of Abu Sufyan. She never forgot that because they caused her so much pain. She migrated all the way to Abyssinia for many years, and her husband became murtad. And she did not leave Islam. Her husband apostated from Islam. He became Christian. He liked the, uh, he went to Europe and became more British than the British. 
Some Muslims like that. When they go to Europe, they forget. She remained faithful to Allah and his messenger. Guess what? Allah paid her back by marrying the best man on earth. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She became wife of Rasulullah. Do you know what does it mean, wife of the Prophet? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She will be his wife in Jannah. And she will be a master of the ladies of paradise. Ummu Habiba, may Allah be pleased with her. You see, patience, what? The sisters who are patient. Allah will reward you more than you can ever imagine. Just sabr. Same thing for the brothers who are patient. Indeed, Oran Saber will be given the reward without Hisab. Okay? All right. So, he went to his daughter. Oh, my daughter. Now your daughter? Because you are in trouble. Now you know her. Because she is married to the Prophet Sallallahu So he wanted to say, help me, help me. Tell, talk to your husband, Muhammad Sallallahu so that you know we 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 sign the deal again of peace when he wanted to sit she folded the bed in one narration they say bed in one narration said carpet so the father felt a little bit perplexed he said abu sufyan to her oh my daughter i don't know why you do that is it because the carpet is not good enough for me or for another reason she said you are najis Huh? You are Najis, you are Mushrik. And I am very ashamed of you. How can you not keep the peace treaty with the Prophet? That's what she said to her father. Who amongst us dare to stand up against her father when he's wrong? And tell him, Dad, you're wrong. Please don't do that. She said, You are Mushrik. You cannot sit on the Prophet bed. And another thing, you, you made me ashamed. I'm ashamed of you as my father. You didn't keep your word of honor. What's a man without a word of honor? What is a man? Serious, brothers and sisters. You think being having a beard and, and having sexual organ of a man makes you a man? No. What makes you a man is your ethics, is your behavior. You give a word, that's it. Even if you lose something, I gave my word. Tahal Abba, Khalas, Habis. Is this clear? So she said to him, How can you do that? You cannot control a small tribe called Banu Bakr and you let them kill people aligned to us inside the Kaaba, near the Kaaba, inside Masjid al Haram. She was furious. Yes, she stood up by Allah. She said, well, this is my daddy. I have to, what can I do? No, what can you do? You ladies, when you want to do, you do. When you want to do things, you have a lot of power. Yeah? So don't underestimate yourself. Go ahead. Continue, please. Being disgusted at the curt reply of his daughter, Abu Sufyan stepped out of her room and went to see the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the latter was well aware of his tricks and did not hold him any assurance. He then approached Abu Bakr, but the latter too declined to interfere. He contacted Umar to intercede, but this great companion made a point blank refusal. At last he saw Ali bin Abi Talib and began begging him in the most humble words, cunningly alluding to the prospects of mastery over all the Arabs if he were to intercede for the renewal of the treaty. Ali also briefly regretted his inability to do anything for him. Abu Sufyan turned to his, his steps back to Makkah in a state of bitter disappointment and utter horror. There he submitted a report of his meeting with his daughter, Abu Bakr, Umar and Ali's reaction and the meaningful silence of the Prophet. The Makkans were dismayed, but did not expect imminent danger. 
Okay, now pay attention to this. No one dared to say anything when the Prophet said nothing. If the Prophet was silent, he was dead silent. When Abu Sufyan was meaning, I don't, I don't hear you. You broke the treaty. Other people, when he tried, Abu Sufyan tried to get them, they didn't fall into his trick. They followed their leader, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nobody went to say, okay, we will try. No. If the Prophet doesn't want to talk to you, we will not talk to you. Look at the leader. Look at the also good followers. Your father doesn't want to deal with that man. Why do you go behind and strike a deal? You definitely are against your father. This is Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If he doesn't want to talk to Abu Sufyan, nobody should talk to him. And why? Because Quraysh broke the treaty. There is no treaty now. There is no peace. That's it. Now time to prepare the army. We're going to go to Mecca and bring Islam once for all. And that is the strategic thinking of Rasulullah when he, a year ago, signed the peace treaty. Remember the peace treaty he signed? Now Omar understand why he didn't let anyone talk. When the Prophet was dealing with uh, the leader of Quraysh at that time, Suhail bin Amr, Huh? I told the Sahaba, nobody should say anything. And they were like offended. Why? Why we don't say anything? And why are we going back? No Umrah this year. The Umrah was the following year. And then less than a year later, they're going to take Mecca. How about that? Isn't that better? Because the non-Muslims will never keep their promise of peace. You, you need to know this. Thank you, brother Isha. Sister, Fadli Nina, go ahead. Preparations for the attack. Preparations for the attack and the imposition of the new blackout. On the authority of At Tabari, Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, asked his wife Aisha, radiallahu an to make preparation that were particularly to marching out to war three days prior to receiving the news relating to the breach of covenant. Abu Bakr radiallahu an meanwhile came in and asked Aisha what the matter was, showing surprise at the preparations being made as it was not, as he said, the usual time for war. She replied that she had no idea. On the morning of the third day, Amr bin Salim al Kuzai arrived in the company of 40 horsemen to brief the Prophet on the affliction of his people. Yeah, we don't hear you. What happened? Sister, you got disconnected. Can you hear me, Shay? Yeah, now, now. Uh, repeat, please. Uh, 40 men, Amr bin Salim al Kuzai. Okay. On the morning of the third day, Amr bin Salim al Kuzayi arrived in the company of 40 horsemen to brief the Prophet on the affliction of his people and seeking the Muslims' help for retaliation. Mm -hmm. The people of Medina then learned that the Quraysh had breached the covenant. Budail followed Amr and then Abu Sufyan, and the news was unequivocally confirmed. With the view of securing a complete news blackout concerning his military intentions, the Prophet dispatched an eight-man mission under the leadership of Abu Qatada bin Rabi, radiallahu an, in the direction of Edom, a short distance from Medina, in Ramadan 8 after Hijrah. This was done in order to divert the attention of people and screen the main target with which he was preoccupied. Very good. Stop there. Everybody learn strategy from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Learn, learn, learn. Learn so much, sisters and brothers, we can learn from Rasulullah. 
Not only hadith and ayah, how to pray, how to fast, how to run our affairs, even military. Pay attention to this. Three days before he receives the news that Fuza'a have been murdered, massacred by, Abu, by Banu Bakr, the Prophet ﷺ told uh, his wife, Aisha, Ummul Mu'mineen, radiyallahu anha, prepare my war gear. The Prophet ﷺ, many of you don't know, the Prophet ﷺ had nine swords. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine. Nine swords to do what? To peel potato? Or to cook in the kitchen? A sword is for what? Jihad. Nine weapons. Some of us don't even have a nail cutter. Ah. And we think we are men. Takbir. Nine swords. Why the Prophet had nine swords? Jihad, lillahi ta'ala. Was he wronging people? No, to defend. In case somebody thinks that the Muslims are a, 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 a boxing bag, you know, bag that the boxers punch. Some, some non-Muslims think we are just like that. No, we are human beings. We have the right to defend ourselves. So remember this, nine, he told Aisha, prepare my clothes of war, of jihad. Her father, Abu Bakr Siddiq, radiallahu anhu, came to visit her and he didn't understand. He said, there is no preparation for war yet. I mean, why are you preparing? What do we learn from this? We learned that Jibril alayhi salam already came and told him, of the plan of Huza'a to be killed by Banu Bakr and Quraysh. Get ready, O Muhammad. We learn also that the women, the wives, were preparing the jihad gear. Women were not just cooking or ordering food through Grab and Uber. Women were also involved in preparing, making sure the sword is sharp, the clothes are ready. Ah, what do you think? How did the Muslims win? Without women, there is nothing. You need to know this. Without Muslim sisters involved in everything we do, we don't go far. And this is why the enemies of Islam want women only to watch drama movies. And some sisters like that. May Allah guide them. They just want to be in front of the TV or the mirror to fix themselves. Any woman who stays more than five, 10 minutes in front of the mirror, it means she's not beautiful. She wants to make herself beautiful. If you are beautiful sister, just something like this and move on. Why you want to stay in front of the mirror until the mirror is about to crack? Allahu Akbar. Enough. You beautiful. Allah created you already beautiful. Move on. Okay. All right. I needed to say that. Now. The fact that Aisha was preparing the cloth and the gear and the weapon of Rasulullah makes it clear that women were involved in the preparation of jihad at least. Abu Bakr Siddiq didn't understand why there is some preparation. SubhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu had three days prior information. Then confirmation came when a delegation from Khuza'a who survived came and said, Ya Rasulullah, we have been killed, massacred. And then the coming of Abu Sufyan to try to negotiate. Okay, okay, guys, let's uh, calm down. Huh? Let's see, find a solution. Find solution, solution. In Mecca, we are coming. Did you get it? Continue, please. Ah, another thing we learn, another thing we learn. 
the Prophet Sallallahu sent, sent eight men towards this place called Idam, just as distraction, so that, because he knows there are people spying, people spying for Quraysh. So they say, oh, there was, a, uh, the Prophet has gone, has sent a group of people towards Idam, far away from Mecca, just so that the non-Muslims think, oh, he's busy with something else. Distraction, you know, to distract them. So that they think, oh, he's busy with something else. While he was going, the main target is Mecca this time. Learn that from Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Continue, sister. There was so much fear and terror everywhere that Hatid, radiallahu an, one of the most trusted followers of the Prophet, secretly dispatched a female messenger with a letter to Mecca containing information of the intended attack. The Prophet received revelation informing him of Hatib's action and sent Ali al-Mikdad al-Zubair and Abu Martad radiallahu an with the instructions to go after her. They overtook the messenger and after a long search discovered the letter carefully hidden in her locks. The Prophet summoned Hatib and asked him what had induced him to this act. He replied, O Messenger of Allah, I have no affinity of blood with the Quraysh. There is only a kind of friendly relationship between them and myself. My family is in Mecca and there is no one to look after them or to offer protection to them. My position stands in striking contrast to that of the refugees whose families are secure due to their blood ties with Quraysh. I felt that since I am not related to them, I should, for the safety of my children, earn their gratitude by doing some good to them. I swear by Allah that I have not done this act as an apostate for taking Islam. I was prompted only by the considerations I have just explained. Umar radiallahu and wanted to cut his head off as a hypocrite. But the Prophet وسلم, accepted his excuse and granted him pardon, then addressed Umar, saying, He is one of those who fought in the Battle of Badr. What do you know, Umar? Perhaps Allah has looked at the people of Badr and said, Do as you please, for I have forgiven you. Umar radiallahu and released him and said, Allah and his messenger know best. Very good. There is a beautiful story here. Hatib, Hatib, Ibn Abi Balta'a, radiyallahu anhu. This Sahabi who attended Badr, he was one of the fighters in the first battle of Badr. And the Prophet sallallahu said, Allah has forgiven the people of Badr, no matter what they do. After that battle, Allah will forgive them. He, poor man, Hatib, was weak. So he wrote a letter to Quraysh telling them about the plans of the Prophet ﷺ. Of course, this is wrong. What he did is very wrong. But he did not do it out of treason or apostasy. He did it out of fear for his wife and children. His wife and children remained in Mecca. He was one of the Muhajirin. He left his wife in Mecca. And he's not Meccan. Guys. He has no blood relation, so no one will protect his wife and children. So he thought by writing a letter to Quraysh telling them that Muhammad Sallallahu may come and attack Me Me Mecca, definitely it's wrong what he did. He thought, oh, they say, okay, Hatib has uh, notified us, so we should protect his wife and children. That was his motive. After he explained to the Prophet why he did so, because he sent that letter with a woman who put it in one of her bridles, hair. He told him, Hatib, why did you do that? He said, Ya Rasulullah, such and such, such reason. Umar radiallahu an said, let me cut off his head, oh messenger of Allah. This is a hypocrite. Omar said, no, he's not one of them. 
He is one of the people who attended Badr. Remember, and Allah has forgiven the people of Badr, no matter what they do, I will give him a chance. Don't do that again, Hatib. Don't do that. That's not right. That's not good. Allah will protect your wife and children, not Quraysh. We've cried, of course, and minta ma'af, as we say here in Malaysia. He asked for forgiveness, and Allah and his messenger have forgiven him. But the beautiful part of the story is the way those four men, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Al Zubair ibn Awam, Al Miqdad bin Amr, and uh, who is number four? Uh, may Allah be pleased with him. Ah, Marthad, Marthad radiallahu anhu. He sent four men to get that woman to stop her from reaching Mecca. Because very sensitive. The information is very, very sensitive. The Prophet wants to surprise Quraysh. And I tell you why he wants to surprise them. Because he wants to break the will of fighting. When I surprise you, you may not react properly. So you don't want to fight. Which the Prophet didn't want blood to spill. But if that woman reached Mecca and gave them that letter, Quraysh would prepare themselves and there would be war, which the Prophet doesn't want. He just wants to take Mecca. He doesn't want to kill anyone. Did you get it? Okay. I want to tell you what Sayyidina Ali and Sayyidina Zubair, may Allah be pleased with them, said to that woman. They told her, lady, give us the letter that is with you. So they intercepted the caravan. There was a caravan going to to Mecca. They stopped the caravan. They went to that woman. Where is? Because Jibreel alayhi salam told the Prophet sallam, Hatib ibn Abi Balta'a has given a letter to this woman who is supposed to give it to Quraysh. Stop them. Those four men, Ali ibn Abi Talib, Zubair ibn Awam, and Miqdad bin Amr, and Marthad radiallahu anhum. May Allah be pleased with them all. When they stopped the caravan, Ali ibn Abi Talib and Zubair ibn Awam, may Allah be pleased with them, went straight to her. They said, sister, give us the letter that is with you. She, uh, she tried to say, what letter? Of course. What letter? She, she, she was not Muslim, by the way, this lady. She was going to Mecca. What letter you are talking about? The letter that is with you. She said, I have no letter. You know what they told her? They said, give us the letter or we will strip you naked. Huh? Or we will take off your clothes. Then she said, okay, okay, here it is. She pulled her hair. It was inside her hair, hidden bridles. She gave it to them. No joke with the Sahaba. Give us that we have command from the Prophet to search you. You better give us. Otherwise, we take off your clothes. We will, because we have a command. You are lying to us. You better not lie. She said, here it is. Alhamdulillah, she couldn't read and write. So she didn't know the content. So no one knew what was inside. The caravan continued to Mecca. But they brought that information, that classified dangerous information. If it reached Mecca, so what do we learn from here? Uh, Islamic, uh, Islamic, uh, what do you call it? Secret service. The Muslims also should have their Muslim strong secret service. Otherwise, everybody play us. Otherwise, everybody, meaning we should have our own secret intelligence. The Muslims have to be strong. Otherwise, you cannot survive. I'm telling you now. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, Allah and his messenger know best. So he didn't want to hit Hatib radiallahu anhu because he was one of the Sahaba who attended Badr. Those were very special people. The Prophet made special dua and Allah told the Prophet I would forgive them forever. 
because they attended the first battle with the Prophet alayhi salatu wassalam. Thank you, sister. Padlinina. Brother Sani, read for us the next chapter, please. The Muslim army proceeds to Mecca. Sani, are you there? Sani Raja, yes. 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 Uh, the Muslim army. Hmm. Preparation for the attack on Mecca and the Prophet's attempt at imposing a new blackout. No. We are in the Muslim army proceeds to Mecca. Sorry. Are you there? Yeah. Okay. Mm. You are not reading from this book, right? Uh, no. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, Muslim. After making full preparation, we don't hear you. We are in page five to three in this book. Yeah, I have a book. The Muslim army proceeds to Mecca. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Do you want me to help uh, Brother Raja? Yeah. Okay. We... I want to catch who's sleeping. I caught one already. Takbir. Yeah. Takbir. Let me hunt. I'm a hunter. Okay, Halas, we, okay. we will forgive him by bringing a very nice uh, cake <laughs> to the Islamic Center, inshallah, uh, next week. Yalla, that's his fine. Yalla, Halas. Yalla, Khairi, go ahead. Assalamualaikum, Jen. Assalamualaikum, Jen. After making full preparation, the Prophet وسلم, proceeded to Makkah at the heat of 10,000 soldiers on the 10th of Ramadan, 8th of the Hijra, he mandated Abu Ruham al-Gifari to dispose the affairs of Medina during his absence. When they reached al-Juhfa, al-Abbas bin Abdul Muttalib and his family came to join the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at al-Abwa at Al Abwa, the Muslims came across Abu Sufyan bin Al Harif and Abdullah bin Umayyah, the Prophet's cousin. But on account of the harm they had inflicted and their satiric language on the believers, they were not welcome. Ali addressed Abu Sufyan to go and beseech the Prophet وسلم, for pardon and confess its his ill behavior in a manner similar to that of Yusuf, the prophets of Joseph brothers. They said, by Allah, indeed Allah has preferred you above us and we certainly have been sinners. Abu Sufyan observed Ali's counsel to which the prophet quoted Allah words. He said, no reproach on you this day. May Allah forgive you. And he is the most merciful of those who show mercy. Abu Sufyan recited some verses paying a generous tribute to the Prophet وسلم, and professing Islam as his only religion. The Muslims then marched on in a state of fasting until they reached a place called al Qadid, where water was available. There, they broke fast and resumed their movement towards Mar as Zahran. The Qurayshids were, were quite unaware of the development of affairs, but the Prophet وسلم, did not like to take them by surprise. He, Therefore, ordered his men to kindle fire on all sides for cooking purposes. The idea behind this was that 
Quraysh should be afforded full opportunity to assess the situation in which they were pitchfork correctly and should not endanger their lives by leaping blindly in the battlefield. Their lives. Their lives. Their lives, sorry. Their lives by leaping blindly in the battlefield. Mm. Umar bin al-Khattab was entrusted with the guard duty. In the meanwhile, Abu Sufyan along with Hakim bin Hizam and Budal bin Warqwa, two terrible polities went out to reconnoiter. Before they got near the camp, they met Abbas, the prophet uncle. He appraised, he appraised Abu Sufyan of the situation and advised him to accept Islam and persuade his people to surrender before Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Otherwise, his head would be struck off. Under the prevailing compelling circumstances, Abu Sufyan went in the company of Abbas seeking the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam audience. The Muslims were furious to see Abu Sufyan and wanted to kill him on the spot. But the two men managed not without difficulties to see the messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam who advised that they see him the following day the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam addressed abu sufyan saying woe to you isn't it time for you to bear witness to the oneness of allah and prophethood of muhammad here the arch enemy of islam began to besiege the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the most earnest words that testify to the Prophet's generosity and mild temper begging for pardon and forgiveness and professing wholeheartedly the new faith on request by Abbas the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the context of the general amnesty he proclaimed gave Abu Sufyan who had a liking for bragging a special privilege saying he would take refuge in Abu Sufyan's house he saved. Whoever confines himself to his house, the inmates thereof shall be in safety. And he who enters the sacred mosque he saved. On the morning of Tuesday, 17 Ramadan, 8 after Hijrah, the Prophet wasallam left Mar, Zah Mar Az Zahran. He ordered, Al Abbas to detain Abu Sufyan at a commanding gorge that could afford a full view of the Muslim army parading on its way towards Makkah, and hence give him the chance to see the great and powerful soldiers of Allah. The different tribes successive, successively passed with their banners flown up until at last the battalion of immigrants and helpers with the Prophet وسلم, at their head, heavily armed, marched by. Abu Sufyan began to wonder who those people were, to which Al-Abbas told him that they were Muhammad وسلم, and his companions. Abu Sufyan said that no army, however powerful, could resist those people. And addressing Al-Abbas, he said, I swear, by, I swear by Allah that the sovereignty of your brother's son has become too powerful to withstand. Uh, <coughs> sorry. al Abbas answered, it is rather the power of prophethood to which the former agreed. Sa'ad bin Ubadah carried the flag of the helpers. When he passed by Abu Sufyan, he said, today we'll witness the great fight. You cannot seek century at al Kaaba, Today we'll witness the humiliation of Quraysh. Abu Sufyan complained about this to the Prophet wasallam, who got angry and said, nay, today al Kaaba will be sanctified and Quraysh on it. And quickly ordered that Sa'ad should be stripped of the flag and that it should be entrusted to his son Qais in another version to Az-Zubair. Very good. Stop that. Now the emotions are running high. The Sahaba are so angry. Not, not only the, the immigrants, 
who have been kicked out of their land for eight years. Eight years for no crime is just because they became Muslim. They didn't kill, they didn't rape, they didn't cheat, they didn't steal. Kick me out. Not just immigrants who their emotion running high. Away from him. We will we kill you all. Can you hear me? Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Salam, Sheikh. We can hear you now. Okay. I lost you for a while. Now we're back. Uh, so the emotions were running high. And the Muslims never saw themselves more powerful than the day of the opening uh, of Mecca. Some of them got carried out. Like Sa'ad bin Ubadah radiallahu anhu, who is the leader of the Ansar. He was given the fact the Prophet Sassim took it away from him. After he has said something, should not. Today we will do this to Quraysh. Quraysh will be human. Today we will kill you all. Al Abbas, the uncle of the Prophet Sassim, what is this? Are they going to do something wrong to us? We have took the flag away from Sad Muad, told him to step down to just be a soldier, but he gave it to his son so that he doesn't feel bad. Because if the person took the flag from one of the Sahaba and gave it to another, maybe you know, or why he did that, he gave it to his son and he said, Don't be like your father, your father is. Uh, oversensitive and too emotional. So sad, I really appreciate and obey the prophet's life because he should not have said that. Uh, the Muslim army headed towards Mecca and the prophet said when they camped, make many bonfires. Why? He wanted Quraysh to see the power of the Muslims before he, he enters Mecca. So that they don't fight. All this are rahma. Sometimes show how you are so that nobody messes up with you. So that no, you don't be to hit someone. Sometimes a good man does that. Because some people don't understand. But too weak. So you need to show them that, hey, you better not mess up. Don't mess with Texas. We have some Texan students with us. MashaAllah. Texas is very weird. Yeah, everything don't mess. Don't mess with Texas. Don't mess with, I don't know what. Halas, sometimes it's wisdom to show your power. Not show off. Show your power. There is difference between showing off and bragging. And sometimes because people think you are too weak. So that they don't mess up with you. So that everybody will be. You know, sama sama, friends. Very important. We stop here, brothers and sisters. We continue next week, inshallah, with Quraysh prepare themselves for the advance army uh, of the Muslims. So they will prepare themselves, but they were already too late to prepare. So the Prophet ﷺ will enter Mecca, and there are beautiful things to learn even when he entered 
who among the Sahaba went on top of the Kaaba to make Adhan, who, uh, who entered from the right hand, how all the met at the Kaaba, and what did Rasulullah himself do? How did he enter the Kaaba? How did he enter Mecca? Like or humble his head all touching the ham of his camp and what did he do first when he saw the Kaaba for the first time three no more in the hand of the mushrikid and what he has said وسلم, to the people of Mecca etc beautiful his history to learn from, to know, and to learn from, and draw lessons and conclusions, inshallah. Let me look at your questions, if there are any, and then move on, inshallah. Uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The story of the female messenger who was was given a secret to leak the Prophet Sallallahu plan to attack Mecca. Is this the Asbab al-Nuzul of Surat al-Mumtahana? No. Very good. No. Very good. This is not. Surat al-Mumtahana was revealed when few sisters ran away from Mecca to Medina. And Quraysh, the family of that lady, went and said, give us our sister. The Prophet said, I don't give you any sister. They said, we have a deal. All the men who come to Mecca, all the who come to Mecca, all the non-Muslims, Medina, and Mecca, we should not return them. He said, that is for men, not for women. The Prophet said, I will not give you the women are our sisters. If men run away from Mecca, but not the women. The women are off. Okay? So that's not the same. After the Battle of Khaybar, you had mentioned that the Jewish women who were expelled eventually married some Arab men in the land of Arabia. We had mentioned that their progeny were discovered by the British and eventually given powers and position to rule many of the Arab countries in the Middle East today. Would you please tell us a bit of this? It is so interesting, mashallah. I know. One day I give you a whole lecture, but not today. Not tonight. In Malaysia is night. I don't know where you are from. Yeah. I, I don't want to talk about this now. I will talk eventually. Whenever I talk, I usually mention that. And I'm 100% right. There are even- okay, No books. problem. Yeah, there are books saying that even. And do you think the British are not smart? The British are very smart, very cunning. They know who to give power to. Yeah, I will, I will inshallah, uh, give a special lecture about that one day. Yeah, okay. Any question? Any question about opening Mecca? Okay, so you, the direct reason to open Mecca was the truce, breaking the truce, breaking the peace treaty of Hudaybiyah by Quraysh and their allies, Banu Bakr, against Khuza'a, who were allied to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So what did Prophet do? He took his army and went, this is it. That is the answer for any non-Muslim when they attack Islam and Muslims. There is no other way. I swear by Allah, they will never respect. They don't respect international law. They don't respect anything. Assalamualaikum, Sheikh. Just curious, when did Sayyidina Abbas uh, converted to Islam? Was it during when he was caught during the war of Uhud or was it now before Fatah Makkah? 
When did he oh. become Muslim? Who? Oh. Uh, Sayyidina Abbas, Rasulullah SAW's uncle. Because he was the last to become Muslim. Al-Abbas became Muslim before migration. Ah, uh, so he did become Muslim before. Before. Al-Abbas and Hamza. Al-Abbas and Hamza, radiyallahu anhuma, became Muslim before the Hijrah. Abu Lahab and Abu Talib refused to become Muslim. Two uncles became Muslim, two uncles refused. But Abbas stayed in Mecca as what? Spy or informant for Rasulullah. Is that the reason why he stayed on in Mecca? He never did Hijrah. No, no, no. He migrated. No, no, no. He migrated. But when they went to Mecca, uh, the Prophet started Abu Sufyan honored him to be with his uncle because of the same age. Pachi, Pachi, Pachi. Sister, you are young. I put you with old ladies. An old lady, I put her with young. Youngsters, no. A lady put an old lady with her. To communicate with each other, especially that Ann and Abbas were friends in their youth. So he put him there. When they were going, I know why you are asking, because Al Abbas was mentioned now. When they were going to Mecca, Abu Sufyan came to the camp of the Prophet Sallallahu So he put him with Al Abbas and told Al Abbas, watch him and don't let anyone harm him. Because everybody respect Al Abbas. That's what it means. He honored him by putting him with someone older. Because Abu Sufyan was very old. Do you understand, Sister Naziha? Yes, yes. Jazakallah. Thank yeah. you. He was Muslim already. He was Muslim. Mm. Why, yeah. Okay. Yes. So Abu Sufyan then only um, reverted to Islam during this time. Very good. Uh, in the eve of opening Mecca. Now he becomes Muslim. Okay, thank you, thank you, Sheikh. One day before, uh, you're welcome. One day before the Prophet Sallallahu opens Mecca. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu told him, isn't it time? Isn't it not time for you, O Abu Sufyan, to fear Allah and proclaim the oneness of God and the prophethood of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu meaning me? Isn't it time? What do you want as evidence? Mecca, I'm taking it tomorrow. You better become Muslim. Khalas, done. We defeated you. What do you want to become Muslim? Your own daughter is married to me. Don't you faham? Then I realized, realized, oh my God, he told Al Abbas, your nephew is becoming very powerful. He said, that's not the power of my nephew, that's the power of prophethood. My nephew is true prophet of Allah, you better become Muslim Abu Sufyan. Before he said, why are you fighting? Why, what makes you not say shahada? Your own son is a Muslim. Your daughter is a Muslim, married to Rasulullah. What do you want? Don't you see the Prophet is becoming stronger and stronger? And stronger? And Abu Sufyan, alas. I told you, some people, only when you, when you show them power, they come to Islam. Some, alhamdulillah, they come to Islam because they are too nice, very nice, deep inside, they're very good people. There are those, their shaitan always fight them, fight them, fight them, fight them. They need to be convinced. Okay, come, we convince you. Come see, do you see this army? Uh, okay, okay, now I'm convinced. Faham? Faham? Okay, my dear brothers and sisters. Any other question? Go ahead. Go ahead, Sister Ali. Go ahead. 
Uh, no, just just to clarify that, um, Shay, because that actually, so um, Abu Sufyan heard Ali's advice, and then also Abbas advice, then met the Prophet. Only after that he he converted to he reverted to Islam. Is it after hearing the advice from Ali? Yeah. Yes. Very good. He needed he needed for him. some people need the attention. Abu Sufyan was boastful leader all his life leader. There. Don't you know say of people? Some people they need attention. You know, they need that you tell them, come sit down here. They like that. How are you? You they need that. So Al Abbas advised him. Ali advised him. May Allah be pleased with them. And Rasulullah sat with him. He told him it's better you do this. It's for your own safety and the safety of people you are their leader. So that we avoid bloodshed. But they had to impress. Yeah. Even the Prophet said, Man dakhala dara Abi Sufyan fahuwa amin. Whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan, if oh, he made him feel, oh, the Prophet said my name. You mentioned my house? Yeah, like that. It's okay. It's okay. Sometimes we have to do some people. What can we do? Some people like that. It's okay. For the sake of Allah to, to achieve something good for Islam, it's okay. As long as whoever enters the house of Abu Sufyan will be safe. You want to be safe, enter the house of Abu uh, you want to be safe, stay home. You want to be safe, safe be near the Kaaba. But don't go on the streets with weapon, sword, and you think, we will just run you over. You are a troublemaker. That's it. May Allah bless you all. Rabbana la tuzikulubana idhadaytana wahab lana min ladunka rahma inna atal wahab. اللهم افتح لنا فتوح العارفين واجعلنا من عبادك الصالحين المصلحين الذين لخون عليهم ولهم اللهم ارحم المسلمين أجمعين الذين شهدوا لك بالوحدانية ولنبيك بالرسالة وماتوا على ذلك ربنا آتنا ما وعدتنا عصلا تقسمك لا تعاد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين May Allah grant shifa to all our brothers and sisters who are not feeling well May Allah grant them shifa May Allah grant them shifa Amin Amin والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته عليكم السلام ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته السلام الله يرحم شيخ الله يرحم شيخ